Welcome to Live from the Lake, a weekly podcast where this wonderful cast of characters talks music amongst other things. We're making this weekly podcast because we love you, care about you deeply, and want nothing more than for you to be happy. I am Jeremy. I'm Jen. I'm Mason. And I'm Noah. Let's dive on in. Um, huge move for Marcus King. Uh, super impressed with the new song. Um, Come Fuck My Life Up Again, I believe is the name of the song. Rick Rubin made the record. Uh, uh, our, uh, our dearly beloved cousin uh, sent uh, this link uh, to the song over to me uh, last week. Um, and I listened, I've listened to it probably... Uh, 10 times since then, I think. Um, unbelievable. Uh, I've been waiting for this kid to deliver a song that I could completely get behind. He's been around for a long time now. We've seen him twice already. Um, and he's, but he's not, young. Oh, yeah, he's young, but he's he's not as young as he was. He's uh, like 24 you know. now, I think. He's right? 27, I think. Oh, geez. I think he's a little older than that. Um, I think he, he Warren Haynes, I believe, found him when he was 19. Um, I think I, I first heard of him um, when he was probably 21. He's 27 now, you're right. And uh, he's got songs, don't get me wrong. And the guy is a freaking assassin on the guitar. Um, just unbelievable talent. I love him. Love seeing him. I mean, those... The, we've, we've never been upset after a show. No. He's uh, always a great So performer. impressed. Uh, so impressed. His voice is crazy. Yeah, no, he's he's incredible. Uh, but this song is just kind of shoot, you know, uh, gut punch, <laughs> gut punch. However you want to say it, uh, really took a professional step as far as I'm concerned. Um, really, really impressed. Awesome. I, it was funny because I heard it. I'm like, I, I actually, my, I was like, did he write this? Is this? And and I think he did. Uh, I I researched it a little bit. I didn't actually see. It, it looks like he did. Um, but then I saw Rick Rubin was on it, and it was uh, it was like okay. Well, uh, that's the thing. I mean, I was actually thinking about that earlier this week. Has Rick Rubin ever done anything that hasn't turned out really well? Yeah, he I has. Think, I think he. I think I, I, like there's flops? a question. Yeah, of course. Um, I think that Rick Rubin has. Uh, I don't think he's about he's not writing the songs and delivering. What he's doing is 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 um I would say his kind of artistry is more along the lines of getting the band into a place, getting them into a situation where they're they're recording the the absolute best version of the song that they possibly can and getting to the point where they are not just happy, but ecstatic about the overall outcome that's his job his job isn't to to write the songs obviously he picks oh, no, he I'm picks the artist like if you're marcus king are you feeling like dude i i got rick rubin to do this so i'm you know kind of a gold star off the bat oh hell yeah like, i think marcus like king I, is probably as thrilled as he's ever been to have the opportunity to work with rick rubin um i know i would be yeah, no, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty positive step in the right direction, no matter who you are. Can you imagine? I, so can, I, you, I can't imagine. I mean, like, he's the guy that went up to Jay-Z and was like, hey, I think we should start the song with, if you're having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. And then drop the beat and run the verse. That was He was like, this is how we should organize this. He, he's got a brain for putting stuff together that works differently, I think, than a lot of other people. Oh, no two ways about it. He's just got like a weird, he's got like a, oh, I can just like, he's got like a visionary thing about him where he's like, this is how this should be. And this is, and then people listen to him because he knows what he's doing. And he's been putting out badass record after badass record for the last 30 years. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. He, I mean, he's a legend. What do you think of the song, Noah? You haven't heard it? It's oh, um, it's you really need to. Yeah, I, I uh, I've listened to it a couple times. The first time I heard it, I was uh doing some work in our wood shop, and he, he uh, dad put it on, 
out here in the basement. And uh, so I was like just overhearing it and like through the music and whatever noise I was making with the tools back there, um, I heard him say something about Adele and I was like, I was like, I like kind of poked my head out and I was like, this is Marcus King, right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so then what are you talking about Adele for? And he's like, and he was like, he, what he was saying was, dude, Adele could sing this song. It like would sound awesome with her singing it. And for sure. That's totally right. Like she, that his voice. It sounds like an Adele song. Exactly. I've never thought of his voice that way. I, I don't listen to him a ton. I'm a huge fan of the song Remember, but that's pretty much the only song of his that I like actively listen to. Um but his his voice on the new on this new song is crazy. It literally sounds like a It's incredibly male soulful. version of Adele. It's It's so yeah, awesome. It's soul and uh another super interesting piece is uh one backwards not buried but the guitar part there's one guitar part on it and it's it's i mean it's not the the front running instrument there's the strings are more apparent in the track than uh the guitar which is also just interesting well because he's like a lethal guitar player (laughs) yeah it's pretty freaking cool you know where else i saw him he did that uh i just i just remembered he did he played with um chris Chris Robinson, robinson uh during the uh uh black crow's it was called "As the Crow Flies." Was the what yeah. they were calling it? It was like before and they he, got back together. It was together. Chris wanting to do, uh, yeah. While he still wasn't talking to his brother, uh, he was he wanted to sing uh, Black Crow songs again, and uh, he put together a band. and And Marcus was there uh, playing those songs. The the, the kid's awesome. Uh, I just was. I'm just super. I'm a really. I'm really happy that uh, he delivered something that. Uh, I just want to listen to over and over and over again. Well, how often have we fallen in love with a band and then it's like, oh, the second record, the third record. Like at some point they like kind of fall off a little or they get a little commercially or, you know, stuff I mean, happens. happens. So I think it's awesome when they continue to do things that you can continue to be excited about and get behind. Well, and I think a lot of that is like who they end up with. You know, like you get guys like uh, like Jake Bug where it's like he puts out his first two albums and they're kick ass and I love both of those albums. And then he signed a big record deal and he's doing what they're telling him to do. But he lost me as a fan because, well, not as lost me as a fan, but I don't listen to any of his new music because it's not the kind of music that I want to listen to. I want to listen to him sing songs like his first and second album, which were bangers. But with somebody like Marcus King, you got Warren Haynes found him. Like if that is where your, you know, tree of, contacts grows from i feel like warren haynes is a really good guy for a guy like marcus king to have as a contact and reach out to and you know get numbers from and meet more people through warren haynes because warren haynes does it like marcus king is making that kind of music versus if you get you know if you make it big and you you sign the record sign with the biggest deal you can because you want to make as much money as you can because like not shitting on people for taking the money but whatever you sign a big record deal and then they decide that they're going to change who what the, the what kind of music you make and what you're putting out because now they are in charge of your music career um so i think that like a lot of people get lucky and are put into a situation from the beginning where it makes sense where like Marcus King with Warren Haynes or like Justin Bieber's manager was Usher. Like Usher had already done what Justin Bieber was trying to do. Right. If Marcus King went to Usher and was like, I want you to be my manager. Dumb decision, dude. You're making money and getting popular doing what you're doing. And then you yeah. are forced to flip flop because you, you want the label to make you better and or allow you to just make do the what music you that you want yeah. to make. Not not the other way. And and that happens a lot. Yeah. No, it happens. It's a like, ton. oh, well, I mean. We've seen Taylor it a lot. Swift just put out. She's doing all of her stuff in her own version now because she wanted to record things very differently than she was allowed to record them through the record label. I don't exactly. think. I don't think that was the reason. She put out her own versions of all of the songs that had already been recorded. I don't know if that was because just because she wanted to re-record them or if because that's because that she doesn't because own those records. That's, uh, there you go. That it, yeah, that's okay. why. 
So and her version, she owns. She's yeah, saying, listen because to my version because that's the one that I own. I own. Got yeah. it. That makes sense. And I think that I think that there were some words that I read somewhere that were like, I didn't record these exactly the way that I wanted them recorded, but that was all about ownership. And now that that that, that has been one of the most. <laughs> I mean. She's put out so much new content because she was re-recorded everything that she's done, and now she's getting like, there's th there's Doubles like a there's an absolutely crazy flywheel spinning, and and she's putting out so much content. She's getting so many uh, hits. She's making so much money. Then she puts the tour on top of that. I mean, it's it's brilliant. It's, well, now there's two yeah. versions of every song, and everybody's going to go listen well, to the I, new version of it. The new one, not the listen to the old one right? again to remember Here's what the it thing, was like. like in my mind, you may love her, you may not. She may be your, right up your alley, she may not be. At the end of the day, if you're a person who loves and appreciates music, the one thing that you've got to do is give her credit for the fact that she's been writing her own music and playing actual instruments the whole time. Like she, she's she does it. I mean, she's she's writing her own stuff. She's she's playing actual instruments. It's not all just you know, done behind the scenes in the in the sound booth. I, I mean, I don't know how much of that is true and how much isn't. Um, I I do know that at least her first couple of albums, she was doing it all by herself, and it was her and her guitar. I don't know. <clears throat> I I'm mean, not saying she still does everything herself, but what I am saying is she's an actual artist. Like, yeah, I mean, no, she she's, really creates like, she's doing something. something. Yeah, she's doing something to write the songs, if not just writing them or whatever. I don't. I don't know necessarily that she's playing any instruments on the albums but that's because they're pop albums and there's probably no real instruments on it besides a drum right. kit or whatever um yeah i don't know i think that that whole thing is um interesting with the re-recordings re and all that kind of well stuff. also if you have a daughter she's like actually someone that you're not super you know Hesitant for your daughter to yeah, it's not, pay attention it's to. It's not Megan the Stallion yeah, 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 yeah. shaking it's her not, house on the ground. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. no WAP happening, which yeah. is always a bonus. <laughs> I saw a funny Instagram thing. But it's also like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the music society has kind of done that to itself to a certain extent. Like all the, the pop girl, like Katy Perry in 2010 was shooting whipped cream out of her boobs because it was hot in the... California girls music like we've it's not yeah, yeah. like the WAP thing is out of nowhere like, oh no the, there was, a, there was a, a kid that, whatever, that like, told her dad that WAP stood for um waffles and pancakes no it was it was the same thing uh w watermelon and pizza and so he was calling all the neighbors and being like hey we're having a WAP party we're having a WAP party <laughs> and the That's mom so you see the reaction of the mom she runs in she's like who told your dad Oh He's my like, god! Yeah, that's him, hilarious. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, she's uh, yeah, she's definitely a, not a bad role model for these little girls to be looking up to. No, I, she seems she's, like she's a really genuine. person. Of all of the people, well, and she's a good person. business person. She's making yeah. money, and, and she's that's, smart. It, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. really good. And the songwriting thing is like kind of whatever, but it's also not not impressive. Like. Right. Nobody's I mean, it, writing songs, so it's not like you have to write songs in order to, to be impressive. But the fact that you are makes you that much more impressive. Well, and uh, yeah, like the song I saw something. The song "Wrecking Ball," the Miley Cyrus song, yeah, was offered to Beyonce before Miley Cyrus, and Beyonce said no, so Miley Cyrus got it and recorded. That's how it. a lot of those but, songs are. No, but my point is now we know that at least Miley Cyrus and Beyonce aren't writing all their own music, which no, of course is not. their, right. but their performers. I was hearing someone, uh, the, the Billy Strings, uh, Billy Strings was on the, this past weekend with Theo Vaughn and he was talking about the Grammys and about how, uh, BTS was there, the Korean, the K-pop group. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was, he was talking about last year's Grammys. Um, but he was like, it's weird. Cause I, sit up there with my guitar in front of a microphone and I sing without auto tune and I, there's no pre-recorded tracks. It's all live. This is what I do. I'm a musician, whatever. So he's like, part of me going into that situation is like, well, they're using auto tune and they're using pre-recorded tracks and they're not actually singing when they're performing live. They're like lip singing to pre-recorded stuff, whatever. He's like, so I go into that with a super negative, like, they're cheating, they're like 
playing the system. Everybody thinks they're doing this stuff and they're not. He's like, but in reality, that's not what they're trying to sell. It's what people are buying in some cases. But he's like, I, he's like, after seeing them, I realized he's like, it's not, they're not an artist in the same way that I'm an artist. They're an artist in the way that somebody writes some music, they record it, sing the songs. And then they, when they perform, they're not singers performing, they're dancers performing. They go up there and dance their asses off and sing while they dance, which is crazy and super impressive. I could never do that. Um, but it's just a completely different thing. It's an interesting it's, thing to think about. They're when you, performers, not when you, musicians. When, Same thing with like Lady Gaga or Katy Perry or anybody like that to a certain extent. It, it varies per with the right. individual artist. But I do think a lot of the pop has become more of a production value it's always been rather that. than a well but i feel like it's becoming more one or the other like i don't know if it is or isn't um pop has always been that it's the bubblegum i dance it's it's different i think the the one the thing that yeah. that makes me think of is how the how uh, you know the idea of recording music was not based like the the idea of recording music, what that was, it was designed and the thought process was we're going to figure out a way to capture musicians doing their thing in an authentic way and as authentic of a way as we possibly can. And it's completely changed um, over the years and with the tools that are now made available, um, it's turned into something that is completely different and and you can absolutely argue that the 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 recording process is is very much a part of the art in in a lot of these instances whereas you know in the old days it was just a tool and it's still an art George, George Martin the you know fifth beetle he was doing amazing things back there um but it, it people have doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on that idea and now it's to the point where like the studio is a tool yeah and the pedals and the the sounds and the and auto tune and record loopers and recording you know one uh, or or taking a recording and turning that into something different it's just it's just a it's just the way it's gone is is uh mark ronson is he a i know he's got the he's got the he did, he did Uptown Funk with Uptown Bruno Mars. Funk, right. He wrote that song. But he's written a lot of songs, right? Yes. Um, I learned something about him today, and it was totally false advertising. It was like um, Mark Ronson's sister is this girl named Annabelle Dexter Jones, who is in succession. Oh. And her father which is actually Mark Ronson's stepfather. Okay. Is Mick Jones from Foreigner. They made it look like it made it was like, "Oh, this is, you know, like that's his th dad." It's not, it's his stepdad, but either way, like that's super Somebody that influenced his yeah, life for sure. Pretty interesting. Um, I think he's doing a masterclass or something like that where he's or whatever they call those things where I you know he's going to teach you all the tricks. I kind of want to get songs. one of those. A master class? Uh, what I want to know is if you like buy the subscription, let's say, can you watch like any of them or do you buy yeah. like just oh. per person? I don't know. I have no idea. I kind of feel like it would be an interesting thing to have for like when you're on like a flight, like yeah. something to like watch where you could like learn something, but like interesting yeah. from somebody that you, you can do it and admire. And I, and I just saw something yesterday that one of the big, like, I, it might have been it, it might have been MIT that's giving away like there, like there's there's tons and tons of free courses that they're making available. I don't know. I have no idea. But that yeah, some of those things look pretty they they look they pretty look, interesting. like I'm like, oh, I would really like to actually I, like it seems like I don't know, like a little more of an intimate monologue from someone than you would get on like a you know quick little segment on a morning news show or whatever. Yeah. Like you get to like actually like have a little more like knowledge of who the person is, how they did things, why they've done things the way they did them, what's worked well for them. I feel like that's interesting to hear from people that are successful. <clears throat> yeah. 
I think that's like uh, that's like, like a, the education idea, like like a master class kind of a deal. That's what it is. Yeah. It's and, and and you pay a, you pay like a hundred bucks and you get access to you know someone brilliant uh, teaching the them the things Tyson's that they've teaching learned. Teaching you about space, right? But th- like in this day and age, when you look at like edu- I'd, I'd the education like system before his. <laughs> And you look at the education system and, 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 you know, there's shitty teachers out there. Um, there's great teachers out there. There's but, overworked teachers out there. Yeah, that are no, underpaid no. But there's like, there's there. no reason why there should be any gap whatsoever when you have brilliant people and YouTube. Well, that was your big thing during COVID. You kept saying, why don't they just get the best in every subject Right. Pay so them it's, a it's, ton it's exactly, of money, it's and then a, nobody it, has to go to college anymore. You just take the courses you need to take. Well, it certainly shouldn't cost fifty thousand dollars a year if you can have access to something like that. Right. All right. Change of change of direction. Okay. Yeah. Um. What do we want to do? Do we want to do a segment? No, I was just going to no? change uh, direction. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I can. Uh, so this past. Are you going to change direction? Yeah, I'll help you change direction. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Yeah, no, I was I was all ready to change direction. Oh, if, I, well, if you go have ahead. somewhere this past to go, weekend, by, what happened? By all means, I was going to say this past uh, this past weekend we uh, the Noah, my father, and I boogied down to oh. uh, space in Evanston and saw a Jayhawks show. The Jayhawks, and it was at four thirty, which was very interesting because I've mm-hmm. never seen a matinee concert before. I, I asked if... Dad after, I was like, is it like when you come out of the movies where you feel like you're kind of a zombie? And he was like, no, no. it wasn't that bad. That's what I said when I wa- when we walked in. I was like, this is either going to be fine or it might destroy our whole nights because we're going to be ready to go to bed for some reason when we walk outside. And I was honestly, I was like, it's going to be dark, too, because it's going to be like six. It wasn't and, dark. But it wasn't dark, which I think was a big Thing. You I think also if it weren't was like, like sitting in a recliner watching TV in the dark for two hours. Well, exactly. You were being it, entertained. Yeah, but it was definitely a uh, definitely an interesting experience seeing a show at four thirty. Um, Have you been would, to space before? I saw. Yeah, we went and saw Sunvolt there, which okay. was a good show. It did not sound good in there, but guitars were too loud. Yeah, it was oh, just I it, the mix wasn't saying great. That. Space is a small room, uh 350 people I think, uh or so, and Sunvolt really brought the heat with regards to the guitars. Yeah, the mix was just really hot. We were also wise. right up front. The guitars were just really loud. It was so loud that we couldn't hear uh the 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 songs the, vocals, uh, the way yeah. that we wanted to. Jayhawks Jayhawks uh sounded really good. We were a little bit further back, um not very far. What what a cool band! Uh, you know, a lot of songs, um, a lot of good. Songs. Oh my gosh, a lot of songs, a lot like of good like songs under the radar Absolutely. for where they should be. I, I definitely agree yeah. that people should be paying more attention to them, or should have paid more attention to them over the years. They've been an, an amazing uh, band that has just kept going and kept going. And there's been some, you know, uh, it ha- like the one of the founding members has, has been has, was in the band and then was out of the band and then was in the band and was out of the band. Um. But but uh, uh, Gary, you know, has kept the train on the tracks, and uh, I, I, you know, all, I think all the people that are currently in the band, um, actually, I'm not sure about the drummer, but I think all of them are original members of the band, um, and they're great. They're fabulous. They have a lot of good songs. Um, really, his voice sounded really good. Awesome. Um, and they they played a lot of songs, and I knew all but two of them. Yep. And I loved the show. It was really fun. And it was really weird to go to a 4.30 show, come out, be home by like, you know, 6.30, 6.30 or whatever. I was shocked yeah. when you texted me and said you guys were on your way it was home. Awesome. I literally was it like, was great. oh, I was home because our daughter had pictures for Turnabout here happening. So... The parents, literally the last parents, just left the house. Lori hadn't even left to go to dinner yet. And we were on our way home. And Dad texted me that you guys were on your way home. I was like, this is so yeah, it was weird. weird. It was super but weird. But that's great. I mean, that's an awesome way to spend an afternoon. Well, and it was a great show. Like, it was totally one of the ones where I walked into it kind of not knowing what to expect. I was a little, honestly, I was a little nervous. Like, sometimes you go to shows of, like, I, I like the Jayhawks. I know... I knew that I knew like Some. two or three or four of their songs. 
So going into a concert like that, you're like, well, I hope they play the four songs that I know, and I hope that the rest of the songs of that he I... He was singing songs that I didn't know. I was and like, then, oh my gosh, well, I don't know this one. But then it, it's like, I hope they play the songs that I know, and I hope that the songs that they play that I don't know are, are good. good. But... I mean, I knew going in based off of just what I knew of the Jayhawks that I wasn't going to be upset with hearing songs that I didn't know. Same thing with like a Foo Fighters show. I'm not, I know that it's going to be good no matter what it is, even if I don't know what song it is. Right. But after post show, I walk, I was walking with him and I was like, dude, I knew like literally every song besides one, maybe two. He said when you guys got home, I was like, how was the show? He's like, dude. Mason knew like way more songs than I expected. Yeah, the one that he knew like every song. I I knew that's awesome. I knew Angeline and he didn't, which is what blew his mind a little bit. I think I've Um, uh, I've seen this band. I've actually seen the Jayhawks like a ton. And and when I was in high school, I had a Jayhawks hat and I wore it to death. Like like I was one of those hats that I like wore a lot. Um, and I was thinking about it. I first saw them uh twenty nine years ago. Which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> so you were what, seventeen? Yeah, and and uh, well, yeah, it depends. Yes, 18, but uh, sixteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, Gary Loris, the guitar player, he's got a you know he's got the SG with the bigs beyond it. Uh, it was yeah. re- you know, that was one of the fun, more fun parts of that show for me was just watching how, especially lately, because lately we we've been seeing a lot of jam bands and yeah. go hard. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we're like, yes. Um, a regular artist can like to, jam a lot more songs in. To see, well, yeah, they play a lot of songs, oh, but yeah. but also to see how the, just the guitar work and how he, you know, and he's got, he's got licks. Like, oh, the, I'm sure. Oh, I no, know. no, you know. I know like, them. That, that, yeah, uh, waiting for the sun. And oh. like, yeah, like there's, there's some licks in there and uh, he's very good but he's he you know it's all in very compressed little doses and yeah. it was fun to see him work it was he was awesome and he, you know what it was like a family thing he had his like grandkids or something there oh yeah no it there was, was awesome. little kids like it was real That's cool. it was wholesome well, fun good time good saturday afternoon festivities i am almost 100% certain that they were his grandchildren that were there because it was a 21 and older show well, so, I think been. it was like his son and he brought his grandkids or something. Because at one cute. point he looked over and was like, all right, Jack, I'm singing this song for you. And they're like, Jack's eating cookies. And he's like, well, tell him to get back over here. This is the song he wanted to hear me play. That's and then cute. like 30 seconds later, there's a little kid up on some shoulders waving. That's like, very yeah, sweet. No, it was super cool. Noah, you're very quiet over there. Did you have a good time at the Jayhawk show? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Had a great time. It was awesome. All right. That's it. Nothing else to add. And you're covering it. Yeah. We're yeah. covering it. Um, so just so you know, as we're sitting here having this conversation and you're saying you've been watching them for, you know, your whole life, you've been seeing this band. It occurred to me that a hundred years ago, when we were very first dating, you got an order from Columbia Records. Uh and you had gotten an extra record because you like the record of the month because you didn't check the box that you uh, didn't want it and it was yeah. a Jayhawk CD that you already had so you gave it to me. Oh, there you go. That was my first Jayhawk CD. There, there you go. So that was fun. Well, there you go. Tomorrow the green grass, I believe, was probably that record, uh, or I, it might have been the other one, smile thing. All right, I'm, I got one. Okay. Um, what you got? There was a recent study that was done by a, a company called Luminate, which is a music sales and data company. They surveyed 3,900 people okay. that had bought vinyl records in 2022 and have um, advised that 50% of the 3,900 people that bought vinyl in 2022. Uh-huh. They haven't even opened the record. Don't own a record player. Don't own a record Don't player. Don't own a record Shut player. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Listen, no, that's fair. it's I, cool to buy vinyl, but fucking listen to it. Pause. For God's sake. What I will say is there is like kind of a thing where it's like, oh, we use them as wall decorations, like stuff like that. 
But the right way to do that is go to fucking Goodwill and pick out the like cool artwork. No, no, not the cool artwork. Like the shit albums that nobody's ever gonna listen to, and then you paint the like these people. But these people no, may, have them. Them, may have bought on, them may have bought them for their friend that does own oh, a record no, player. No, for sure. But like But also the 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 hypothesis that as I understand it and this came from, you know, it, this was kind of churning around um and there's multiple sources, but um the the understanding that I got is that their kind of hypothesis for why that was was it was about like super fandom. So I'm a, I'm a diehard, you know, Rage the, Against yeah. the Machine record, and Rage dropped an, a vinyl record for Record Store Day, yep. and I went and I got it. Um, there's other collector type of reasoning yeah, behind like buying resale. a record. Okay, well, wait a minute. Yeah. So am I understanding correctly that this huge spike recently in vinyl sales is 3,900 people in a year? No. No, oh. no. They surveyed 3,900 people who oh, bought records, who, who sur- happened okay. to buy records okay. in 2022. Sorry, I was like, no. that's no, the, the resurgence spike? Of, it's 3,900? That's No, terrible. the resurgence in vinyl is audiophiles wanting to listen to higher quality recordings of I think last tracks. year, I think I read somewhere that last year was the first year in a very long time when it sent, uh, where, where they sold more vinyl, vinyl than they did CDs. Well, because <laughs> honestly, who has a CD player that's not a car. I know fewer people that have CD players that are not a car than own record players. Does my car I have honestly, a CD player? Yes, I'm almost positive. I don't think it does. I don't think Mine I, does. What? I don't think our car has Your car one. might not. But, I think our car does Well, not. your car's like three years older than mine, or four years older than mine. Older? Newer. Yeah. <laughs> my car is four years older than yours. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I just don't What I was going to say was, honestly, I think I might know more people who make regular use of uh, Walkman or some sort of tape playback machine than they do... Cassette? Like, yeah, cassette. People have Walkmans? Yeah, no, I know a couple people who have Walkmans. I think my what I'm saying is, I think I might know more people who consistently and regularly use a Walkman listen than cassettes. do listen to CDs. What? Yeah. Well, a disc man's hardly reasonable. How many people do you know? Okay, hold on. <laughs> three or I know three or four people that you that, that you have know a cassette player? three. How many is it? Do you know three people that have a, a Walkman? I think or I four? probably know three. I don't know. It's like three or four. Probably three. How many people sure, do you know, three. Noah? But that I know a Walkman. I did. I have not seen a, an individual. I think Mason's guessing that uh, based on people's uh, just no, general know, character, he's like, I know. Yeah, I know three people that are the kind of people that probably have a Walkman. That's, no, I think, where he's going. I know the kind of- for sure three people who have Walkmans. Can I tell stuff. you a funny story about Walkmans? Um, sure. I don't even know like what year they came out in. It was in like the. I, I literally just saw an ad 80s. for them the other day, like the original ad for the Walkman. I think the yeah. first one. My actually, my parents had one that was like didn't have headphones. It was a little bit bigger than a normal Walkman, and it had speakers. But I think That's that came Walkman. out in the That's late seventies. That is a mini. But it was, no, no, it was like this big though. It's a radio. Yeah. The right, but I think yeah. the ones that had headphones were like eighty one, eighty two. Yeah. So orange. so my dad, yeah. my dad, who uh, we affectionately refer to as Gramps. Uh, he didn't get the first Walkman, but he got the first like awesome Walkman. Like it was, it was really sexy, and it had the cool uh, headphones with the orange, the orange foam, foam. Puffy foam yeah. on the top of. Was it over silver? The, the yeah, Walkman, it, or was it the yellow? It like, was. Sporty al- one? It was almost like the the uh, what do we call the dark metal space gray? Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. It was that uh, okay. darker well, metal. Very attractive. It had like it was so cool. Uh, it, it, I mean, this thing was like state of the art. And and to put it in perspective, this thing was like a thousand dollars. Like th- this was not, yeah. it, it, you know, and it did not actually fit in like a pocket. Like, no, it wasn't you, it, small. It, no, it, was it had like, a clip that could clip, clip on the, the belt. belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the clip is actually a part of the story. So we're we're at the beach, oh, and we God. walk out on the pier. And, and <laughs> someone clips Gramps and the Walkman, the thousand dollar Walkman, flies off of the belt and into the drink. And uh, Lake Michigan, and that's would the end of the, the story. Drink. Oh my God! Were you standing next to him when it happened? It was just yeah. His reaction <laughs> oh, was no. His reaction was not. <laughs> I 
can't believe I've never heard this story. It was not overly animated. It was it was internal Silent. sigh, God. frustration. Fucking damn it! Are you fucking kidding me? Was what he was thinking. Fuck my life. I don't know. I don't remember the rest of the details though. This was a very long you time just, ago. Pew, walk me I was gone. like probably That's five so, or six so or seven years old. <laughs> And Boom. and his thousand dollar Walkman went cruising into the soaring. into the lake, and it was very upsetting oh, that's for him. Devastating. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> shitty, dude. Um, I know exactly where it fell, though. Like maybe we should go we diving go for it. it. Maybe yeah, we, we should go get it. We've got the magnet. We can, we could pull it up. I bet you we could. Do you know what tape was in there? I have no idea. It was probably <laughs> like Kim Carnes or or Kenny Loggins. What I was gonna say, I thought we you were. This. Oh, I thought you were gonna go with that. like somebody nudged it and he and it like dropped the tape out into the sand. No, but not not nearly as dramatic. Oh, as no. like but let me tell Walkman, you, this is Walkman fun. Ejected this is fun. It te lake. Teaching you youngins. So then the the next thing that was like the, the Walkmans cassettes, blah blah blah. Then Walkmans became just second nature, uh, and they were you know totally affordable. Everybody had them. Oh, yeah. Then they made like little earbud type of things and yellow. Uh, so they were the sport model. Oh, the sport model. They could get splashed on, or you could walk in the rain with you them. You could run with this three. Blah blah. Right. Blah. Then CDs come out, and when CDs come out, everybody's like, "Yeah," because there was a lot of problems with cassettes. Dude, like Rewinding. they would get wonky, they would break, and then you'd have to like tape them together on both sides and like splice it, and it, and, and then that would be like a, a, a ugly sound when it passed. It would be like, yeah. there was problems with them. The, the, you couldn't just skip songs on no, you some to, of no, them. You had like a fancy yeah, one could skip from one song to the next. Right, you get like yeah. really good, like kind of like when you're skipping through like a three hour uh, show on YouTube, where you have to like, oh, yeah, like, this is it's about this many minutes. You get. I got really good at actually like figuring out how long the songs were, but CDs were, were were really awesome because you could skip tracks. I mean, that was the biggest thing. Yeah, and they were. And you could repeat. They were smaller. You could stack them up. They were thin. You 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 had we had these books, um, and, and you'd put the CD in the book and with the you know whatever. I know you about the like books, mom. Don't worry. Them, you know, oh yeah, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. I had so many of them. Oh, I know. And I'd I'd had like you know A through C and D through whatever. And I in had in the car. In the car, yeah. <laughs> Road you, trips you, were a blast. Yeah. You think texting and driving <laughs> is bad? Like, oh Where's my God. Gina he'd be like, no, give no. me, give me, I want K. And then I did, and he'd be like, just give it to me. No, just tell me which no, one no. you want. Yeah. No, just give it to me. No, just give it to me. It's Flipping fun. through. Um. It was so fun. Uh, it was very good. But when walk when when the CD, the portable CD player, the, the CD man. Walkman, they called it Discman. I did not get a Discman. I did not. Well, I got where this, is like, that thing going? shitty version of a disc oh, man. Oh, I had a disc man. Yeah, but I like, had this thing where you could, it was portable. But uh, mine you had was to, in the car, bro. I had to hold it like this while I was walking and like be its gyroscope. Oh, yeah, no, you couldn't. Because if you did any of the, like, it if there was any tweaking, it, it skipped. And so I had to, I held it out in front of me and I walked gingerly. And I could, I and I could go around. I used to keep it on my lap in my car. Yeah. So I could play CDs in the car and they wouldn't skip. I, um, yeah, but Velcro I mean, it was cool. And then, good, and then what really. you did is you plugged into the aux, yeah. and then there was a wire, and the wire was connected to a cassette, and yeah. then you put the cassette in the cassette player. I know about and the that's cassette how it aux tape. Yeah, I know. It was awesome. I know dude. about that. But we were all over it. You okay. have a lot to be thankful really for. Really quick, the return. You to have no idea what you missed. It was a time to be alive. Me, me saying that there are more. I know more people that have Walkmans and use them than there are. Yeah, people I don't that, believe you. I want their names and their <laughs> cell phone numbers so that I could reach out and we could have like a Walkman party at the house. No, 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 no. Listen, I know people who use Walkmans. I'm not saying I don't know people that use CDs. I know that I know people that use CDs in their cars you do? and stuff like that. Yeah, our dear friend Carl ran CDs through his car forever and ever and ever. Um, that like there are people I used to use CDs in my car in the Volvo before oh, I got my sure yeah, exactly. Well, there's no, there a are reason people to that, do like, it. You do it, but. The portable aspect of it, the CD, the portable CD player, a CD itself is not fitting in any pocket. So what part of that is portable? You got to get like a brace no, no, that no. straps you to your chest. You're not understanding click it something. In, like, you're not understanding something. The way it sat in the machine, it was literally like 
on a, a tiny, not tiny, on a, a very wide base like you would put a record on a turntable, only it's like hovering in the air. And it had to remain perfectly balanced in order to play. So it's not, it's never going sideways in your pocket. It can't even tilt this yeah, much that's, or it's No, over. that's what I'm saying. That is why my claim of... It was people use like more more people like the, use Walkmans now than use portable CD players. That is the reasoning behind it because the portable you can CD never, player's it's not good though. No, it was, it was terrible. I think it would be great if you no, were no, like sitting said, at the beach. He said they got, got good. good. Oh, and, yeah. All it is is the little stem where yeah. the CD sits. Mm -hmm. They ended up putting like little like ball bearings that go in when you push it down and then come back out once yeah. it locks in the bottom. Like the pop up. And then it was poles. like locked, and then and then the disc was small enough. And they, that that it wouldn't wobble when yeah. you, when you, uh, you know. I'm just saying turned it sideways. The, the Walkman is actually a more portable thing than a portable CD player in most instance, instances, and no. that's why I think more people use them. I disagree. Okay, I got another one. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. Bazinga. Jimmy Buffett uh, put out a video. He passed away this year. He's. He, I don't think it was him that put the video out. Post-mortem. But it was a video that Jimmy Buffett's site put out, and it was a, a, a video of him playing a song. And he get, he comes on, and he's like, hey, I'm getting ready to go to Pine Knob, oh. at, at which he called it, uh, you know, DTE or whatever it's called now, in Clarkston, Michigan. And I'm getting ready. For, and, you know, he was talking, talking, talking. He's like, so I'm sitting here, and I'm rehearsing my songs and I know it's kind of silly, but I've been playing them forever, but I'm rehearsing my songs. And then he, and then he like, he's like, so I figured out maybe you want to see. So he turns in his chair and he's got his computer up and he's like, and he turns back, he goes, I just love ultimate guitar tabs so that I can, I can play my, he's play, he's using ultimate guitar tabs to look up and to play look his up own and play his, his own songs, songs. <laughs> which I thought was really, really he's like, funny. Well, I got to remember how I did this. Isn't that funny? It's, I, now, well, how did that it's go? great. It's great. It's probably super annoying when he finds one and starts and he's like, oh, this is not Isn't right. It, I just thought that was so funny. It's uh, great, dude. That's awesome. Think about how. Think about how. How psyched like, you'd be if, like, oh, I just go to this well, like site yeah. where everybody and goes. No, if like, Mozart's like, oh, I'm gonna out. perform this. It's like, oh yeah, let me rifle through this like file cabinet full of music that I've it's written. It's just in amazing the past. that he's Whatever. using ultimate guitar tabs. I think to, that was funny. To that's funny. That is to, funny to, as to well. rehearse his own songs. I thought that that's was pretty great. awesome. That's hilarious. I mean, I, but that I mean that's. There's technology for you. People find a way to use it no matter what. No doubt. Technology. Yeah. And I mean, going, f the technology is crazy. I mean, I know we already kind of talked about the like AI and music and stuff, but <laughs> I keep thinking about this, uh, this one guy on Instagram. I think his, uh, his username is called, it's there I ruined it. All asked or under, yeah. When underscores. he plays the different, so he plays so a he takes like different take, lyric on top of a song that you know. Yeah. And love. Oh, so, you've sent those. So he'll me. take like crazy. So he'll take like both oh, of you have. Yeah. So it's like um, uh, I get around is the one that I just saw. It's I get around by the Beach Boys. Music or lyrics? Music. Okay. And it's the Beach Boys still singing, but they're not singing. I get around, they're singing 99 Problems. So it's, if you're having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. It's Thank great. You. But Thank you for does, the performance. But he does, like, Johnny Cash singing a Taylor Swift song or Travis, or, or whatever, a Travis Kelsey song yeah, that he, she writes, or a Taylor Swift song that, Travi, to, Travis that she Kelsey writes when singing. they break up or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's... I mean, that's just like Instagram content, but it is interesting that you can like do that. do that pretty. And it seems like he does it relative with relative ease once you figure out how to do it. Yeah, no, he knows how to do it. For sure. There's this guy, um, Ari Steak, who was the guy that I, I, when I, when we did the podcast and we were talking about the guy that's got the business where he takes AI songs yeah, and puts them on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. I went back and was trying to figure out where I had found it, and I found it, and it's this guy, Ari Steak, and he's a a best-selling artist. Um, he's got a, a song or a book called How to Make It in the New Music Business. He's kind of at the bleeding edge of technology and how things are working and how to make uh, you know things happen in the current, you know, uh, you know, the way that things are today. 
he put something up that was interesting that that uh, that boiled down to dollars amount that artists make on a million streams. So, oh. and and he just compared Spotify to Apple Music, but on a Do million. Do you know this? Ish, are we allowed to guess? Yeah, sure. Oh, I well, saw well, something. What but... if I give you just one and then you try and guess the other? Are they? Sure. Oh, they're not the same. No. So. Spotify on a million streams will pay you five thousand one hundred and forty-five dollars or so. Mm -hmm. so. Every time a million people have listened to one of your songs. Yep. A million hits on your song makes you five grand. Yeah, that tracks. I Wait, saw something so a couple months ago that Snoop Dogg hit two billion or hit a billion streams on one of his songs, and he went to his like accountant or what, some whoever handles his Spotify account. He's like, dude, I hit two billion or I hit a billion streams on whatever song on Spotify. How much money has that made me? And he was like, under, he said it was like under $490,000 or something. That's off a billion hits oh, on Spotify. I think that's okay. an order of Sorry. magnitude different than if dad's saying it's five grand for a million, a hundred million would be 500 grand. So a billion would be 5 million. Oh, oh well, well, I no. He, he said, said he said it was like under four hundred. I don't know. Something I, what million, I will say is there is like there thousand, an in, but... in, uh, a disparity between artists too, because there's an incentive to keep like they're going to give Rihanna more cents per listen or, or decimal. I think it's it's a fractional cent yeah. per listen, but they're that not going to give you that I benefit. You know, there's no, an incentive well, exactly. to keep Rihanna yeah. on Spotify. You have to command it. Yeah, the Snoop Dogg numbers might be a little skewed because I know that he, like, for a while pulled Doggy Style off of Spotify and and yeah. Dre pulled well, I don't uh, think, I don't 2001 think, off yeah, and they, like, went to a different... A okay. But they went to different... That's um, shocking. <clears throat> ...streaming services. Okay, so, so he so might have gotten dinged because he left Spotify. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very low number, which is why, you know, touring is so important because they're not making their money on their records. But uh, one, million, one million streams... Uh, per the Ari Stake uh, Instagram account is $5,145 on Spotify. What do you think it is on Apple Music? Ooh. It's 5145 on Spotify? Yeah. Uh, so now we have to play a game called Is Apple More or Less? Just throw it out. Nice I was thinking, is, I feel like Apple is more... Conscious, a company. Apple, maybe they pay better. Maybe more conscious. Definitely four thousand three hundred and sixty-two dollars. Okay. Over or under? Uh, I'd say four thousand dollars. Okay, so no, uh, do you both of your. I think it's higher, but. You think it's I think Apple than Music pays more. Would pay more. I th th to me that was logical because they don't. They're they're. Um. I feel like Spotify gets way more listens than Apple Music. And but, like Apple is sitting on a pile of money. So if they want to try and incentivize. They can yeah. do it. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, Apple is $7,897. Oh, there they you go. are more. Now, I was kind <clears throat> of like. Not just more. Um, that's like. Almost double. Yeah. One and a <laughs> hundred and fifty. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it, it, it's a it's a yeah they're they're healthily mm. uh okay see that bank in spotify with the percentage of profit off per listen or cents profit per listen the thing is. is yeah i don't know nowadays like you said touring is so important but it's not like they're making their money touring anyway Ticketmaster is making the money off well but that's also part of the reason that everybody's putting out vinyl records right now even though well, it's, it's a, it's even why though it's important a song to buy a T-shirt at your show. Well, yeah. but it's yeah. So merch is merch. merch is super important, but also a lot of that is vinyl. Like, or go on uh, their website and buy their merch if you can't afford to no, buy it at the auditorium. Exactly, that's what I did. That like, was an interesting one. Who was it? So one of you guys was telling me about. Uh, was I think it was one of you guys that were telling me that. Venues are starting to demand a piece of the merch yeah. freaking booth yeah. too, and, which is um, bullshit. So, somebody fun. was uh, externally publishing that information about different venues, That's but it horrible. was it was basically like, yeah, no, we're getting our margins are the same on the merch, whether you buy it on our website or buy it in the venue, but we have to have a fifty percent markup because they're taking x amount or or it's an upfront cost it's like oh in order to sell merch it's going to be 30 grand or whatever like there are there are Such different a... ways in which they and to be clear most it. of the venues are owned by live the nation. same people that control the ticket prices live nation who owns Ticketmaster. right yeah 
Ooh. So they've got. I I don't know. Like I, that is probably about as close to a monopoly as I don't want to get, get upset. Let's uh, we let's should not go too on. far it's on too that. Um, I have I have something that could distract us for. Okay, a, cool. A um, I'm ready. Distract me. I have a new Distraction. segment. That I have a new segment that I'd like to to try. What's it called? Um, I think we can. I mean, we can. Oh, is this the one? Is this, this the? Is this? It's gonna be. Is this pontoon trivia? It's gonna be pontoon. Pontoon. Pon. P o n t u n e. Pontoon trivia. Trivia. So because we have to tie it back to the exactly lake. Got to be lake related because we're live from the lake. So during this segment, segment, I don't know if it'll be a weekly segment or not, but during this segment, I will give my fellow family members hints. Usually three. This week I have four because it's a pretty challenging one, and the fourth one is kind of a gimme that might make it a little easier if they're struggling. Dennis Rodman. Mm, about a song. It's about <laughs> a song. What is Machu Picchu? It's about a song. Oh. Um, so, are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, so you're going to ask us questions, and I'm going to give you. What, what is? No, you, he's going to give you things three about hints. a song, and we have to figure out what the song is. So based the on answer the is a song. The answer is the title of a song. Oh, and and the the things that you're going to say are about the are song. Ab- excuse yes, me. Let's about go. the song, not about like the words no. that make up the. It's about the song. the song. Okay, and it's not. Uh, it's nobody covering. So it's. Not I like, bet it'll all be a lot clearer once yeah. we hear the first hint. You be forty. It's not a cover of a song or anything. It's the original song. Okay, the Star Spangled Banner. No, um, this song was originally released in 1967. This land is your land. You really got me, the Kinks. No. 1967? That's the, 67. That's so should okay, we just so, start rattling off tunes from 67? Well, no. No, no, no. I'm, I was waiting for <laughs> you to Sergeant all get Peppers? your thoughts out before I okay. got to, went to the next one. It premiered as part of Our World, which was a BBC initiative that took place also in 1967, and it was the first global television broadcast. So there was a TV show called Our World on the BBC, and the song was on it? Yes. It, it, was, it was like the theme song? I don't know if it was the theme song, but they played it during the first the show. It the was first the first episode. globally televised broadcast ever, and they played it during that broadcast. They played this. Are song. we allowed to use technology at all? No, um, no. If, okay. you, if I get through all four, okay. and then you can't keep going. Think. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, Sixty-seven, and it was broadcast BBC, around the whole BBC, world on the BBC. Nineteen sixty-seven. Can we ask questions? Sure, but if they're like going to give you the answer, I might not answer them. Was it broadcast from? I don't know the UK. Well, it's the BBC, so I would think. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it's a UK band. So it's a UK band. Yes, think okay. Beatles, uh, Cream. The Kinks, uh, it's still 1967. The is that like hip to be on the BBC yet? Well, the BBC might have been cool back then. Think David Attenborough was there when they flipped to color. What year was that? Like, it's a band or a musician. This is a song, right? No, no, is no. the song it, from no, a band or a musician? I don't think you should answer that question. Okay, don't answer that. Do not answer that okay. question. Would you like the third hint? Yes. Uh, cream mm. white room. Wrong. The third hint is that in 19- 19... Her Majesty. The Kinks. <gasps> That's the Beatles Her Majesty song. is a Beatles song, but... Oh, no, no, no. No, no. God, if the, no what's if... the Kink song? Girl. Oh, no, no. Am I thinking... You already the... guessed you really got me. No, no, no. Lola? No, the... no, no, no. There's a Kink song about... Victoria. No, it's not Victoria. That song is great. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Again, like I, I can't imagine the BBC playing that though. Like you never know. You could have had some hit for that, like, somehow got it done. Okay. Right, hit number three. This song in nineteen eighty five was the only song that Elvis Costello played for his entire set at Live Aid. He played he came out for a whole set. Played one song, walked off the stage. It was this song. It was. A, it's a cover. It's not written by Elvis Costello. He came out. I was. I saw that. And covered one oh song God. and then walked this off is stage very in 1985. Hard. Good job, Mason. Give Elvis. peace a chance. No. It, Elvis Costello played a set. He played. No. He was. He played one he was, song. He was. He had a slot a at Live Age. He walked out, played, played one, one song. song and it was this stage. song. Live Aid. What did I say? Live stage. You said Live Age. Okay, whatever. It was Live Aid. Live Aid. He came out. He had a block of time at Live Aid. He came out, played one song, walked off stage, and Damn. didn't use the rest of his What could it thing. Be, possibly and it was, be? It was this song. 
Um, was Revolver in 1967? I think I so. Know. I'm not good at that, that no. part. Okay. okay. Here's, Here's the fourth you, you know no, that Revolver Rob- wasn't released in 1967? <laughs> think- what the heck is that? I don't that? think... Would it Elvis Costello a- have done a freaking Beatles tune? It is a Beatles tune. It is a Beatles tune. It was yes. written by John yes. Lennon. Imagine. And it is on That's the Magical Mystery song. Tour album. Oh, fuck. So... Oh, God. I am I the Walrus. Uh, no. Huh? I am the Walrus. No. No. Uh, Strawberry no. Fields I, I know what it is. It was on 67. It was in 67. Uh, no. With a little help from our friends? That's no, not. No, that's, that's not Peppers. Peppers. Record. Oh, shit. What Wait, record is it? Is Magical it? Magical Mystery, Mystery, Mystery Tour. Tour. Yeah. Shit. I don't know which songs are on that record at all. That's a very enigmatic record for me, too. I if looked at it and I was like, this, it's going to be depressing, know. and I think okay. that we should. Shit. No, this has been shit, a good shit, one. Shit. Okay. Oh, no, it's, it's a, a good Beatles one, but we should know the answer. That was played around the world. So it was an impactful Beatles song. So it's not, you know, I want to hold your hand. That's not okay. Yeah. Sixty-seven. That's definitely not on that record. No, I'm just. I right. I don't know what's on that record, so I'm trying to get there in my brain. Magical mystery tour. It's like it's after, um, all the early poppy stuff. It's after the. Like, Is this the first one after all the early poppy stuff? Uh, it, I think it's like after Re- Rubber Soul and Revolver. Rubber, yeah. Soul? Rubber Soul and Revolver, and it's, then this, and then this, oh, and then shit. Peppers. Peppers was right after. I think they the released album? this at the beginning of 1967, and then I think they released Sgt. Peppers at the end of 1967. Okay, so Re- Revolver is before this, and Revolver is like um, Eleanor Rigby, Bang Bang Maxwell. Like yeah. All of that is on... That's not on Revolver. Maxwell Silver Hammer is on the oh, last Maxwell record. Is, yeah, that's on... Uh, is that Magical Mystery Tour? Tour? Yeah, yes. which is that's I Am the Walrus. Yes. Yeah. There's another big tune. I'm trying to think of John's Lucy songs. in the Sky with Diamonds? No, that's Sergeant Pepper. So they came out with before this... That's crazy because there's... Uh, well, I guess that's oh me. God. They had Mason. Please Please Me, With the Beatles, Hard Day's Night, Beatles for Sale, Help, Rubber Soul, Revolver, Sergeant Pepper's... Were the all of the that's all the albums they released before Magical Mystery what, what Tour? What would the George song have been on that record? I don't know, but oh, it was a John Magical song. Mystery that's not oh, he said it's a John yeah. song. Yeah. He yeah. said it's a John song. Strawberry it's Fields, John song. No. Um, Strawberry Fields is on that album, but it is not that song. It's um, also not "I Am the Walrus" or "Magical Mystery Tour" the title track. Is uh, there's two other songs that. This All of us what, know in this room that are me. on this album. Look at me. But it is hard. This is the record that was part of when they were. This is the record that was part of the Beatles thing that we watched. They recorded. Remember, it was all recorded like funky because they ended up re- releasing this one after Sgt. Pepper's, but the songs were recorded before. You're Sergeant thinking of Peppers? Get Back. They recorded Let Back. It Be before they recorded Abbey Road and then recorded to released Damn Abbey it. Road okay, first I'm and Let It Be after. Hell. I don't know. Would you like to know the answer? No. What what kind of game is this? I mean, I could. Uh, uh, okay. Well, make a pick. How many have you picked? A couple. Pick another one. He's had a couple. Um, Noah's honestly, I, I think Noah's on the hottest streak out of Lucy all of in you. the Sky with Diamonds. No, nope. I nope. said that. That's on Sergeant Pepper. Um, I don't no, think Lucy so. It was is, a single with Penny Lucy Lane. Is, so yeah, I thought Lucy maybe is, it was oh, also Lucy. on that record. On the oh no, he said Dad's has Strawberry Fields. Penny Lane <gasps> um, is also on this album. Um, yeah, Penny Lane was also on the other side of the single. That was yeah, exactly. Why, why I was thinking. You mean Mr. Mustard? No. No, no, that's, that's on Sergeant that's Peppers. Record. That's on Abbey Road. Um, she came in through the bed. That's, that's also Abbey Road. So is Polythene Pam. Oh, I got a feeling. I love Polythene that's not, Pam. That's let it be. That's, let it be. I know. It's you guys are really good like, at all the records not, other than what this. I will <laughs> say is, what I will say is uh, Polythene Pam, Bathroom Window, and Mean Mr. Mustard. I don't know if that's the order they go in the album, but listen to those three songs back to back to back oh, because they are perfectly magic. recorded and they like it's on move purpose. into that was each like other. Yes. Exactly. No. I feel like an asshole not it's knowing the Beatles. I can't believe song. I don't know this. I'm so annoyed. Like Wait, there's one more clue, and you said it'll blow it out of the water. No, no, no. The have fourth it. clue was me telling you that it was a John Lennon Beatles song off of Magic. <laughs> right. Mystery tour. No, no. All right. So we got to just reapproach it. Can you, it. Can you come no, no, up no, no, with no. I don't want more. I don't want more. I well, think we can't we got sit it. here for much right, longer I, sitting I, here I, like Right. Well, we're not sitting stumped. here in silence. I'm trying to figure it out. So let's like try and figure it out together. It's a John Lennon song. Elvis yeah. Costello would have played it for an extended period of time. 
Those two facts should be enough to be like, okay, this song can't work. This song. I don't can't think work. he played this the song repeatedly. I think he. I, did, no, he, I, I said he for came an up and played a he, long he, version. Of right. It. What does for an extended that. period of time mean? No, no I, I just I, I wanted to clarify <laughs> that because I wasn't sure what you were saying. Because <laughs> when I first read a, about it, I was like, wait, I'm sorry. Did he play this multiple times? No, he just played it once. Okay, that's right. What? There's another song that is right alongside "I Am the Walrus" that I think of as the songs on that record and it's not any song that we've mentioned already that strawberry fields i don't nope. think so no there's another song that i associate with the magical it, mystery tour it's the record. last song on the album this is song it like is the last hello song goodbye on... no that's no. earlier she said no um the end that's, that's later that's abbey road i'm just throwing yeah, shit yeah. i don't know I, I, also we gotta think like it's like a john song i don't know i it's <sighs> slower to slower John song. It's very hippie. Oh my god. This is awful. Um, across I feel the like universe. Such an asshole. You are closer. Oh, you're getting shit. Closer. I, I was like, that's it. No, you're getting closer. Um what's uh boy, you're gonna nope. carry that weight. That's carry the weight, no. Or carry that weight, I think is what um, that's And then the goes. end is after that. Yeah. But no, you're right. You're the Strawberry Fields that. Forever. How does that song end? Strawberry Fields is Followed with Penny Lane on this album. Right, that was the two singles. Um, shoot, man, I I'm gonna be so all disappointed. All four of you guys, are, or all three of you guys, are gonna be very upset. Be of so course we are. It's a it's a no brainer. It's, like, it's, it's, it's like oh no. Well, it, but it's also is the it reason. Get back? The reason no. I picked it is because it's one of the songs that I was like, I totally forget about this song every once in a while. Um, it's a very shit. very good song. Not one of my favorite Beatles songs, but. Well, I mean, it's one of my favorite Beatles songs. It's not my favorite Beatles song, though. It's time to give up. I'm only sleeping. That's I'm not mine. It. No, it that's starts, a George <gasps> song. Oh, it starts. No. Oh, is it? Um, it starts with an A. Is it? Oh no. A dig a pony. <laughs> <laughs> All you need. All you need is, is love. love. Fuck me. Jesus. Come on. That was. Fucking bush lead of all hey, of us. But, El- but Elvis Costello <laughs> playing it o- only we, that at Live Aid at 1985 in slick. 1985 is pretty badass. Pretty slick. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. that. I was like, wow, whoa. This is I. But it's also one of the Beatles songs that like kind of flies under the radar. I feel like just because it's like everybody's heard that song a million love. times. It's not super great for you a know. Party. If I'm gonna get it's super like a, critical, I'm gonna listen to this by I wouldn't myself. Call alone. that a slow song. I was thrown. I was thinking of slower songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah, I was if gonna. If you hadn't said that, Noah would have gotten. No, it. I was gonna. At one point, I thought strongly about you put going. Us at wah, a wah, 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 wah. No, no, no. You <laughs> seeing if you picked that. it up, you should But that. you would have picked it up, which is why I didn't do it. So, so quite the. That was good, Mace. There. It was good, Mace. You did a well, really good you. job. I'm proud of you, I man. I try. Way to I go. Try. Way to go. That was good. Fist bump. I do my best. Um, yeah. No, I think that that's a fun fun little game. Yeah, it's a play. fun It's a fun one. I think we spent a little much time on it, and we were really bad and should be punished yeah, for uh, not getting it. I'll, but try, and, I'll try and I start you off with some softballs. There should be some the punishment aspect few. to it next time. It should be, you know, I don't yeah, know. You we, have we'll have to, to workshop that. You have to put your hand in a, in a jello mold. No, it should punish the listeners too. So oh. it's like, all right, you have to have um, Jello in your mouth for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta marshmallow. You gotta challenge. Eat this whole bag of pretzels before we're done. You know, yeah, something Dad, really. Dad's awesome. got to munch on saltines for the ne- <laughs> for the next forty five minutes. Oh, when I was a kid, we used to have like field day. Did you have that at school? Yeah, townie day is what they called it at at uh, my school, but. Townland. But we call I it feel field like day townie day school. sounds sort of like carny day. Townie day. Hey, yo. <laughs> well, hey, I'm put a your overalls well, on and I let's go to down. Get, bring your shotgun to school day. It's because I went to Townline Elementary okay, School, so, so we were townies. One of the field townies. day activities when I was a kid Bonkers. was you had to eat four saltine crackers and then try and whistle, whistle. in under 30 seconds. And whoever could do it was the winner. I helped. Oh, there I, an... I came with you to Lori's field day. They definitely like were doing it, and yeah. you were one of the people helping with it. So. I remember. Uh, yeah, you know what happened that day? Was, like, it was archery. Fun, you know? Oh, yeah, that was middle school. Archery, they gave... The, oh, we didn't get to do archery school, ever. Archery. It, was it was always dope. funny. I would oh. drive by, like, because I would drive by that school. Us? Yeah. 
And then you guys would be to the left, school would be to the right. 7.45 a.m. And I'd see you guys out there. With your targets? <laughs> With our like, targets. Yeah. By the way, that was that parking lot is one of the worst places I've ever seen in my <laughs> the, life. The it's one of the, it's one of the like the, it, literally the worst display of human of kind. human humanity <laughs> is the fucking parking middle lot, middle school parking, the lot. drop off zone at the middle school. Well, that's horrible. you're talking like, like pure <laughs> shitheads, like we're talking bad people. Oh, evil. I agree. Maniacal, <laughs> shitty people, like cutting people off. <laughs> One time, oh, terrible. One time, oh, you you're remember there's about like the actual line itself. Oh my like god, the no, the, 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 <laughs> the moms and the grandmas and the dads and the I thought you were talking about around. we're no. talking like bad people. I thought you were talking like the architect who designed oh, this. No, no, that person parking should, lot needs to go yeah, to jail. That person I was just like, whoa, dude. No, no. One no, time the though, I driving. one time the like parents. so you turn in right. So there's people that are tur- are like opposite and are on the other side of the street that have to turn. And then there's a whole bunch of people on the other side of the street that are just turning, turning in. Right. They're turning they're right. In, yeah. The people that are turning left have to wait for somebody that's turning right to let them in. And they never do, like just total jerks. I was always turning right because we lived to the right or we lived that way. But one time, one day, I, I seriously, I cannot believe what this made me feel like. But I was turning right. I was one car Behind and the way that it is, it's like a hill. You have to go when you turn. You kind of go up a little hill into the driveway, and this, this, like, grandma, who was driving like a shitty car, um, like drove up the hill and then her car died. I was with you. You were with me. I was with you, and the people, fucking lost their minds. Dude, they were fucking. Pissed mean. at this old lady. Like they were like yelling her. at her. They were screaming. They were honking. It was so pathetically disgusting. disgusting. I was like, I live in a neighborhood with you people. No, it was bad. It was terrible. I got out of my car display. and like I got out of my car and pushed the lady. Yeah, I was with you. And and she was like it mortified. Would, it would probably she be was, more helpful to push her car, but. <laughs> no, I pushed her. Yeah, yeah shoved this lady yeah. right down. Yeah, yeah. I was out of our way. Yeah, that, that, no. yeah no, 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 definitely I not. I pushed her car. Well, Another guy then, ran up and pushed her car with me, and we pushed her kind of yeah, out of but the way. No offense. She I was think- mortified. And then I go back to my car, who's I'm front row turning right, and people are honking at me to hurry up and get in my car. To, I'm like, you guys. It was like a little old Hispanic lady who like clearly had like. Was had people yelling at she her was a grandma. in a language she didn't really understand no, and was whatever. Like, and no but she was also like, "I'm broken. My car is broken down. It's seven thirty in the morning. She was just, and I'm in no the middle of a fucking that. parking lot. Like, and it was we've just all had a car breakdown. The line. It's yeah. horrible. It's gut wrenching. Well, I was a freshman in high hell. school, or it maybe even in eighth grade, and it, I was like, terrible. "What the hell are we doing? It you was. Guys? It terrible. wasn't. So gross. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. It was just like. But you know what that reminds me of? Impatience. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of when we were coming home from wherever we were coming home from, and we were on that road over by Botanical Gardens, and that lady oh. had driven like three blocks the wrong way. Were you into, with us? I think only were either Lori of you guys was with us? us. I must not have been with you. Oh my no, God. I don't know only what you're Lori about. was with this us. This lady, the road was closed. It was like a bridge, and they were doing construction. And so our side of the road was the only, like, you could go. Oh, no. North, but you could, you were not supposed to go south because it was closed, and, it was the, like, and it said the road is closed. This woman had driven like three blocks the wrong way, and I it was me and like fifty people behind me that were coming north, and she was coming at and you. She was coming at me. And and I was then like, all oh my of a god! Sudden she was like, oh, stop! So she stopped, and then she started to reverse, and she needed to reverse for three blocks. And did not know how to drive her car backwards. She oh, would drive no. like five feet and bump like into like curve, one of those construction and barrels. Like hit a cur- yeah, hit something, and then and then drive forward a little bit, and then reverse, and then drive forward. It was mortifying. Excruciating. It was this literally woman, like a person that had so never funny. ever ever had to back oh, up my gosh. And, like, and and maneuver in any way, shape, or I form ever one. in her life. It took her. 25 minutes to back up Not the kidding. three blocks. We okay. watched. It, I mean, and we sat there. It was she was ridiculous. just scrambling. I, I I felt bad for well, her, but I was like, like oh, you're was such an idiot. Like, Why did you do this? Yeah. You put yourself in this you situation. Not, like, did you think the sign was well, lying when it said the road was closed? So she's screwing up, trying to move faster. I, uh, you totally just reminded me. Um, 
my my girlfriend goes to the University of Iowa in Iowa City, and um, when I went to go help her move in for her freshman year, um, I drove down there with her and her mother in a car full of people, her stuff, uh. and then we went and dropped stuff off, and then uh, and like got her unpacked into her dorm, and then we were gonna run to Target to go grab some groceries for her before we left, and. Um, we were, it's like an actual downtown area. So there's like parallel parking on the side of the streets. But other than that, it's like good luck trying to find something or park in a parking garage. A lot of the, it's nice. A lot of the parking garages there are like first hour free or like a dollar an hour. It's like nothing. But so we were waiting to get into, to find somewhere close to park target to park and it's move in day for the freshmen. So it's totally slammed in there and we're waiting we're like a half a block from this next stoplight that's in front of us. And there's a moving truck sitting like in the middle of the road on in our lane. So our lane of traffic isn't really moving because like every once in a while, someone jumps around the truck and then gets out. But the people behind the truck are still stuck because oncoming traffic is coming. So we ended up sitting in front of this target for like 15 minutes and the entirety of the time that we were sitting in this traffic spot. Yeah. <laughs> we are watching a young woman in a Honda CRV, a white one, trying to parallel park. <laughs> uh. In, out, back in, back out. Back in, back out. Back the in, worst back is out. when you're like six like, inches like from the curb all we the way are like, across. No, we are like, like laughing it. hysterically well, it provided at provided some comic relief. It's beautiful. A, While you're waiting. The fucking lady in front of her got out of the store, and had checked out. Car. She had checked out. She was coming back to her car, put all her shit in her groceries. And then parked got the girl's in car the for girl's her. car, parked her car for her, got out, got back into her car, and drove away. Because this girl could literally not parallel like, park, Can you just please for park for me? her life. And honestly, if I was that lady and I watched her doing you that, I'd be like, like, please, I'd just, be like, let me please do it. just let me do it. You're going to hit my car. It'll I just be easier it'll be fine. if uh, you let me do this. Because That's hilarious. That, but Literally, it was the most mortifying thing I had ever seen in my entire life. I was like, I'm surprised this girl's not crying. Oh, I'm sure there she probably people, wanted to like, cry, like ev- heckling her well, and no, laughing. No, nobody and- was doing that, but it was like, you're in the middle of downtown Iowa City, and there is heavy traffic on this street. Everyone's there watching. are people watching you, and every time you pull out, you're blocking oncoming traffic. So, But it, yeah, no, it was some people. I'm just surprised that they get licensed. And especially in your license. Well, dude, and Illinois is like not the easiest state to get licensed in. No, oh, please. Illinois, you got to do nine months on your permit with like 50 hours, 50, 500 hours or whatever. Illinois, uh, California. 50 hours, not 500 hours. 525,600 minutes. Um, <laughs> no, but I think in, like in California, they only have to do like six months or th- three no months idea. or something like that. Bullshit. So, um, I need to take a break. Hello there. I'm so glad you could join me. I really hope you've been listening and enjoying our podcast so far. And if you have been, it would be amazing if you could subscribe to us on YouTube and like this video. If you're listening on Spotify, give us a follow. If you're on Apple Music, a review would mean the world to us. And uh, if you'd like to see what we're up to in the near future, you can follow us on Instagram at Live from the Lake Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy your day. Did you know that Shel Silverstein wrote Boy Named Sue? I did. I did. Yeah. Sorry. And Where did share- you learn that? From you? Yeah. <laughs> I heard a story. He shared it at a party that was with like all kinds of you crazy people. You didn't hear people. it from me? I'm sure I... You, yeah, you did. 
I'm sure I heard it from you as well, but I also heard a firsthand account that it was a party with Bob Dylan and uh, Joni Mitchell and a bunch of people in California, and they were sharing songs, and Johnny Cash was there, and Shel Silverstein played boy man, boy named Sue. Well, that was then, maybe Johnny Cash and wasn't then Johnny there for Cash that, but... beat the shit out of Bob Dylan so that he could have okay. Could so have a song. But, yeah. did you know? You guys know the song Johnny, the Johnny Cash song Twenty Five Minutes to Go? Yes. You know that song? Yeah. Probably. Did you know is that, that also Shel, Shel Silverstein? Shel really? Silverstein wrote that song too. Cool. Weird. Which is about, <laughs> you know, death row inmate execution. Minutes getting to go. ready to die. Yeah. 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 I do remember that. I song. had no I idea. Heard that song in a very I had long no time. idea. I haven't heard that song in a long time either. It's a good did, song. Okay. Did you know that was one of the kitchen songs at the French courthouse? Yeah. 18 minutes to go, that one? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, like that, you totally, I have not listened to that song in probably 15 years, and I'm really? 20 years old. And we I, should play that tonight. No, I'm like, you literally just unlocked a weird core memory of mine of... Being in the kitchen. Being in the kitchen at, at our, our first, first house. house that I moved into, that they moved into when I was a month old. Well, we actually moved all there together. Like, you were there too. They well, didn't move. You did the moving. You were the adults in you the situation. Did no moving. I did no moving besides when I was being moved by a human. <laughs> my point was You should be listening to the the Folsom Prison record. That um, that's on there and it's amazing. My point was you totally just unlocked a weird cool. core memory of me in the kitchen with mom hanging out listening to that song and Boy My Boy Name Sue and uh Folsom Prison. Like just the I don't record. Know. It yeah. must have been just like the whole full. The, record, so then probably. I was like, "What else did he write?" You know, and it, and it was Shell. Shell Silverstein has written over eight hundred songs. So Man, busted crickets. out poems, dude. He's got, and this might mean something to you. It means nothing to me. But okay. do you know the song? The you you you're a big Loretta Lynn fan, right? Of course. Do you know the song? Uh, hey is Loretta. From no. no. Do you know the song One's on the Way? I feel like I might <laughs> if I heard it actually. Do you know the song Fair. Here I Am Again? Oh. He wrote that. Yes. He wrote all three of them. Oh shit. He wrote um He wrote songs for Waylon Jennings and with Waylon Jennings. He wrote a song for Judy Collins. When did he die? Hey Nelly Nelly. Don't know. I think I know that song. And you guys know the song, The Cover of the Rolling Stone by Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show? It's an old 60s song. Mm -hmm. He wrote that too. Jesus. Shel Silverstein. I mean, I, I mean, guess that tracks. And like, he wrote The Giving Tree and well, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And, and The Light in the Attic. And The Light in the, the Attic. attic and uh, yeah, there's a, I think there's a third one too. There is a third one that came out I way can't later, remember what but it's I can't called. remember what it's called. We should have copies of all of those. The I guy actually, was amazing. I remember when that one, I feel like that one was like a... He released post mortem like yeah. maybe when I was a kid. He also at some out. point worked for for Playboy. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, go show, go show. Go. But I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, did he it, live in Laurel Canyon? Probably did. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise. What is Shell short for? I'm, I'm actually going to do, do a well, little. Okay, so I had a friend whose dad's Shell. name was Sheldon. 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 Sheldon Allen Silverstein was we should an American known. writer, poet, Sheldon cartoonist. Sheldon Allen Silverstein. Oh yeah. Cartoonist, singer, songwriter, and musician. Musician and playwright. Born, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I thought he was from Where New was York. he born and raised? Born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I accidentally said the S because he, the next sentence starts with Silverstein. Did you hear him? He said born said and Illinois. raised in Chicago, Illinois. I did say Illinois, but Illinois. it was because the next sentence is Silverstein briefly attended Silverstein. university before he got drafted into the army. I wonder um, where he went to high school. Oh, he was born. If on, he went to New Trier, can you just imagine? He was born in 1930, died in May of 1999 in Key West. Oh, God, what a good place. 1930. So he was, yeah, 69 years old I when he died. I think that's the same year that Pop was born. Crazy. Yeah. Actually, about the same. He went family. to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. That's a college. Where did he go for high school? High school. It says he grew up in Logan Square, neighborhood of Chicago, uh. where he attended Theodore Roosevelt High School. He then attended U of I for one semester and was go enrolled shell. in the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts for one semester before he got drafted. Very cool. So he was uh, successful without having a new Trier background. He was drafted into Korea. Yes. 
Uh, yes, one of the few successful Americans that did not attend New Trier. Wasn't a Trevian. Was not a Trevian. Which is, of course, Jeremy's well, alma mater. Uh, who best, was a Trevian? The best high school. Rain Wilson, uh, uh, Dwight Schrute from The Office is a, is a former Rumsfeld. Trevian. Donald Rumsfeld. Liz Fair. Liz Fair. Oh, R- Donald Rumsfeld? Yeah. Yes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. First, in, first, first, indoor, first pool. indoor pool, first radio station for a high school. Oh, the list is endless. Yeah, when no, you we look can at go the on accomplishments on. of the oh, new no. They society. invented the idea of a cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, first library fights. ever in existence. Yeah, first FDR. FDR words. went there. Doug <laughs> curriculum went there. Definitely not. Um, no, but um, the uh, the library guy, the Dewey Decimal, he went there. Dewey. Dewey. <laughs> Love Dewey. The library guy. The Dewey. library guy. Dewey. All right. It's pretty sick. Hi, I'm Dewey, the library guy, coming at you live. With anytime my new I hear the name, system. anytime I hear the name Dewey, I think of Jack Black from uh, School of Rock because that's his yeah. character's real name. Dewey. Yeah, it's, it's, Dewey. Yeah. Microfiche. It's uh, quite a name, Dewey. It's good. I should have named you Dewey. What is Dewey short for is the question. I don't know, but I think we should dedicate this episode to all the Deweys out there. Hell this yeah. one's for you, Dewey. 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 Just Dewey. For you. And I don't mean DUI. We, Are we going to do uh, the secret swimmer? Do We could do a secret swimmer. Do we? Do we need a do secret swimmer? <laughs> do we need a secret swimmer? Okay. What's secret a secret swimmer. swimmer, huh? So secret swimmer is my thing. I am going to give you guys clues. And you have to figure out who I'm referring to. It's a musician, a famous musician. So this is like Mason's thing. So you're here to just make us all nice. look like jerks. No. Oh, cool. No, but I'm about to, I think, give Mason's you some got a really Dewey answer. interesting I, hey, facts. I have the, the, the answer to the Dewey conundrum. Is no. it? Tell me his Is it name. like tell Andrew me for or like something? Dewald. Nah, man. It's it, Dewey is a masculine name of Welsh origin. It's not short for anything. Uh, or Dewey may also uh, be an and anglicized version of a French uh, Huguenot surname. All right, we're off the deep I end. Don't know. It's Dewey. Okay. And there's some other parish stuff. Dewey Time for the with. secret yeah. swimmer. Are you ready? The secret. Mason, swim. you're going to need to put your swim cap on. And put your phone away, your cheater. thinking cap. Sorry, too. I was looking into Dewey. <clears throat> okay. I appreciate it. Musician. Famous. Male. Lou Reed. Tom Waits. High school tennis star. Oh. David Dobrik. Uh, Rick Nielsen. Earned a tennis scholarship for college. Robin Zander. No. Used the scholarship to cho- and chose a major in economics. Hold on, you're going Brian fast. May. That's all I'm giving you so far. Hold Good. on, I feel like it's either going to be someone really obvious, like someone you could see playing tennis, or it's going to be like ludicrous. It's not ludicrous. I, I know okay. it's not he was ludicrous, describing the the behavior of a person. It would be a ludicrous. That is person. ludicrous. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, it's either going to be someone out of left field that you could never see play tennis ever, or it's going to be like, well, economics, you know. tennis. Uh, You're probably right. It's going to be one of those two things. Scholarship for Ian tennis. Ian Anderson. Um, male musician. Um, uh, sitting on a park. Ian. Oh, that's Ian Anderson. I was thinking of the other guy from Yes. What about um John it... Anderson? No. no. Okay. Ready for another clue? I think so. Dad might have a couple more guesses. Though. Rick Ocasek. No. Okay. Okay. After studying economics on his tennis scholarship, <laughs> this Byrne. gentleman seriously contemplated becoming an Episcopalian priest. Oh, what? What? Not David Byrne. Not David Byrne. Um, Brandon Flowers? Oh, good guess. Oh, he's, he's Mormon. not Episcopalian. Yeah, he's not Mormon. Episcopalian. Um, I was just like, oh, religious, religious people. Religious, though. Yeah. Good choice. Um, what about like... How about the guy from Twisted Sister? I don't know what that person's name is, If it was a person, is, right. I, I feel like person. it's, it's got to be someone not, yeah. based on the fact that no, she's it's having us guess. It's someone name. we all know the name of. You know A-pop. the name. No. Damn. Al Green. No. 
Mm. Curtis Mayfield. Do you want more clues, or are we just going to keep guessing? Well, I mean, honestly, the only thing that like has been really fruitful here is that it's a, not a woman. I don't know anything about when this person lived it's or what Oscar instrument winner. they played. They are currently Adrian, alive. Adrian Ballou. Currently alive no. and an Oscar winner. Currently alive. Oscar winner in 1985 for Best Original Song. Phil Collins. No. Oh. But now, in sort what of year? in that vein. 1985. David Boy. No. I would have known if he played tennis. And also, he didn't win an Oscar for The Labyrinth. Robert Smith. No. Um, Peter Gabriel. Did Noah, did you already guess? Did no. someone already say Brian May from Queen? I did, but... Freddie I mean, Mercury. I thought so. No. No, he's... he's alive. He's somebody that's alive, alive. right now. Alive yeah, now. Somebody alive. 85. Uh, Robert Plant. No. No. Bruce Springsteen. No. Are they American? Michael Jackson. He's dead. Uh, yes, he is, dead. he is American. Okay, so he is American. Peter Fr- oh, Peter Frampton is not American. Do you want more clues? No. One more clue. It was Okay, what happened in 1985? Won an Oscar, Oscar for best song. Best original song in a movie. <sighs> Shit. What movies came out in 1985? Robbie That's Robertson. Kind of what I'm trying to think of. No. Christopher Cross. <laughs> You in, already guessed in, Phil in Collins, the vein right? of Phil Collins, mom said so. Yeah, Christopher Cross. I mean, Peter Gabriel. No, we already. Yeah, no. Okay, more clues. Also, I guess not American. His music simply is, red. True. No, his music is so well renowned that it is often used internationally. Hans Zimmerman for English as a second language Zimmer. classes. Hans Zimmer, but that's not Billy Joel. Is. No. But close. He's and using that's the same he's using their, their they his use songs. his songs as English as a second language tools Prince. around the world. Prince. What the Did hell? He, no, it's not Prince. Alive. Lionel. Yes. Bam, Lionel Richie. Tennis Lionel Richie, star. Tennis star. Do you want to know other things hold about on, him? Hold on, hold on. What movie did he win an Oscar for? White Knights, I believe it was called. What? He also at one point was asked by Nelson Mandela. Okay. To create a wardrobe for Nelson to wear while he was touring the world. Fashion icon. He also is the reason that Lionel Messi has the first name Lionel because his parents were huge fans of Lionel Richie and his mother, Messi's mother. Yeah, Lionel. Her name is Celia and she is named after the song Cecilia from Simon Simon and Garfunkel. Um. Wow, they and I the have the up absolute on best. Oh, wait, I have the best one. I didn't tell you yet. Oh my gosh, what is it? In the song "All Night Long," all night. The African portion. Mm-hmm. Come on, Lionel baby baby called what his, language is it, Mom? Hey, Lionel jumbo, called jumbo. his friend that was part of the, like, I think part of NATO or something, or try and get translations. Sat on hold too long. Made it all up. It's not real. It's not a real language. It's okay. What? It's beautiful. I know. So, hey, Jumbo Jumbo isn't a hey, thing? Hey, Jumbo Jumbo. I think Jumbo is Swahili. It's a greeting. So, we could put uh, a link of... of uh, All night long? Well, we have a video... Oh, oh, don't you dare put that video up. Well, I actually have two videos that are re- relevant to that. One we is... We have to get permission from the man. Not if no. all you can see is me belting it out. Oh, are you talking about that video? I have two videos. Oh. We'll, we'll dig in and see if we can put them up. I as a link. Were, yeah, it was a. We saw right. Lionel we, years ago in Vegas. It was awesome. I was very excited. I love Lionel Richie. I think he's awesome. And that she got is stuck what on he's him. referring to. We should spend some time. Um, on the Lionel? Well, I have video of her she like got missing a verse. Stuck and, on you. Or like... Over singing the chorus yeah. or something. Well, stuck actually, the, on you the one term extra time. for the internet, like being online, that that comes from him too. Actually, it from was, Lionel. Yeah, yeah. On like, Lionel. Come on, baby. Don't you <laughs> want to be on online? Lionel. <laughs> Don't you want to be online? Um, hey, I mean, but I will say, like the the um, the wardrobe thing for Nelson, Nelson Mandela. I mean, weird, right? Super weird. But also, I mean, of opportunity. I feel like it kind of. I don't know. Sick little dogs stealing microphone shit from me. Um, two little dogs and a microphone. Yeah, no. Um, our uh, 
my grandfather, your dad, <laughs> always was the guy that was like, yeah, if uh, Michael Jackson didn't become Michael Jackson, Lionel would have been that guy. The it guy. So, I mean, I guess the wardrobe thing isn't that far out of left field if he was... Dude, Lionel was... A dressing he, nice and dancing nice and singing dresser. nice. He had style in the 80s. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Dope. Yeah. Oh, man. Probably going to cut Lionel. it when Coach cuts the mic, but... <laughs> Probably. I love Lionel. Now he's messing with an empty can that's sitting on yeah. the ground. Uh, All right. Okay. Sign it off, baby. Coach is getting crazy. Are we sure? I'm ready. I don't know. We were supposed to do it like before Mason's mic got cut off, and then Mason just kept talking about wardrobes and such. Well, Well, because I was fucking going there already. (laughs) And then I was like, well, I might as well keep going because I got got to burn some time. And here we go again. All right. On my own. Sorry. Dude, you're so sing-songy today. I think I'm going to release a clip that's just all the times you sang in this episode. I wish you would. I I Well, ChatGPT told us to do a sing-song section, so... (laughs) Awesome. <laughs> Noah, why don't you start us off today? Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. We really love the fact that you like listening and sometimes looking at us. It's great. I'm having an awesome time back here. I know everyone out there is having a good time. I hope your ears are comfortable. Ceylon, sailor. <laughs> Macy. I have to follow Ceylon. <laughs> this is why I, last time I was like, I need to go last, but yeah. good luck. All right. Well, I mean. You've been singing the whole episode. Just sing a song No, for don't us. sing a, a song. A little sailing Please. song. Please, God. You are all my sweet children. <laughs> and I don't want you to forget that until next week when I can remind you again. I love you. Good night. I'm Mason. Thanks for hanging out with us. I don't know why they're this weird. It's just the way it is. Have a good night. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Live from the Lake podcast. (laughs) The basement, the home, it's on the lake. Come swim with us soon. Goodbye, my darling. Hey, Jumbo Jumbo!